This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited Webflow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Oh my God, like how good is Hotjar? I mean, I love it. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I, I was just uh, chatting to my friend about how much I love Hotjar. He has no friends. And convenient enough for you guys, in this episode, we're going to take a look at what Hotjar is. What Hotjar does, it records your users using your website. So if I click play here, I can then watch back that recording and just observe what they do on the website, where they scroll to, what buttons they click, and any bugs that they encounter, which is really, really useful. If I pause this now, you can see that there's some clickings happening here. Uh, you can see rage clicks, U-turns, which is when they bounce back from pages. It's just a fantastic way to monitor what people are doing on your website and where they're getting stuck and then make those changes later on. So just a note on GDPR as well. Hotjar actually obfuscates so the data that people are typing in, such as emails, numbers, and things like that. So you're not storing any personal data inside of Hotjar, so there's absolutely no conflict with regards to GDPR. So if I go back here, and I've got a few websites, if I go to the Jupyter the Draft website and hit recordings here, again, I can just watch these things. I've got to sorry, turn that off. I've got this. Uh, I can speed up the recording just to watch what people are doing and, like I say, where they're getting stuck. So it's a really, really useful tool. You can see where they've come from as well. So I can see what sort of websites are driving traffic for me and obviously all that data such as what what browser they were using, what device they were using and even what, what operating system they're using. I think a common mistake with websites is that people think it's just a set and forget task that you build a website and you just let it do its thing. Whereas I believe a website is organic and you need to nurture it. And that's why we keep continuing to look at data in order to make improvements and change a website. I think a website project should continue for at least three months after you've built it just to kind of observe things using Hotjar and then make changes based on the data that you're seeing. The other thing I like to do is do uh, feedback and survey. So right now I have a feedback form that pops up after 30 seconds, if we edit this, after 30 seconds, I'm literally just trying to find out uh, what's giving people pause because truth be told with you people are landing on my website they're looking around they're clicking around uh, reading things and I I'm not getting the amount of conversions that I'd like so I want to try and assess that and I thought a good way to do that was just pop up a feedback survey that just simply asks why you're here or what's giving you pause so again you can really respond to users using your website in a really effective way. And you have so many tools to be able to do that. There's a, a feedback thing, which I felt wasn't right. I don't think, I think with this one, I couldn't set up to pop up after 30 seconds, as an example, or a minute, I think it is. But you can set up interviews. And the only other one here is, where is it? It's the heat maps. I don't think I've got heat maps. Ah, here we go, I have got heat maps. So I've got a heat map set up on the home page, which you need to actually add certain pages. So you can see I've only got homepage set up and you can see where people are clicking now this is based on the data that is recorded so again you can see that you know we're not seeing uh, much data pull through but you can see where people are scrolling to and and just where is most important so then it becomes up to you to infer what the data is and respond accordingly I literally log into Hotjar on a weekly basis and sit back grab a coffee chill out and just watch what people are doing on your website and I'll make notes of like bugs or sticking points or whatever it is that I observe from those videos. So honestly, it's it's not the sexiest job in the world. I'll give you that, but it is a great tool. And setting up couldn't be simpler. I'll leave a link to Webflow's uh, setting up Google Tag Manager tool. As long as you set up Google Tag Manager, you can add things like Hotjar. You can add things like Facebook Pixel. It's really, really simple. So once you've got your Google Tag Manager set up on your website, you can then very, very simply add a new Hotjar website. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna choose an organization. I've got two organizations here. I'm just gonna choose Jupyter the Draft and I'm just gonna do Flow State as my website. And of course the URL. Now I'm doing this in Brave, which has built in tracking blockers, but um, so I'd recommend doing it in uh, Google uh, Chrome. And let's just do this and add the site, right? Very, very simple. You've got all this set up. 
if I go to, obviously I've set this up so I'm not gonna follow through with this. We click Start Setup, it's already prompting you, it's already suggesting that you uh, install it through Google Tag Manager. So you haven't got to do anything really here. We can select a GTM account, uh, let's just do that. And then select a container, flow state, create and publish tag. Now I'm not gonna do that because of course, this will overwrite my previous version. So, but what that will enable you to do then is verify that you've installed the tag correctly. Now, once again, I wouldn't do it in Brave, I'd do it in Chrome so that it can do its magic. I don't know how it does it, but it will verify your site and you're good to go. If you found this quick episode really helpful, I'd really appreciate a like. And until next time, happy no coding.